Are you ready? Are you ready? Professor Knack, Dr. Pepper, and Canco Associates, we have a presentation for you. I'm Lexi Lowell. I'm Grace Meyer. I'm Alice Gogger. Kelly okay, like said. And we're C Lamb. Hello. Our corporation was asked to design an invention that will crush a can to their maximum extent. We got our top scientists together to brainstorm ideas of how we could achieve this goal. Oh, I must I must have left my lab coat in the other room. One second. Safety first. Make sure you need to wear your lab coat and your protective goggles. <laughs> no chewing gum. Always have your hair up at all times. Now we can proceed. Ariel, listen to me. The human world, it's a mess. We first came up with the idea of changing the water temperature. We thought that if we used two different temperature extremes, the hotness from the can and the coldness of the water bucket, the amount of pressure would change dramatically, causing the particles to condense faster. We did three tests. The first was our classroom variable of room temperature water. Our second test was putting ice inside the water bucket. And our third test was testing warm water. <laughs> we tested this by putting ice inside our water bucket and heating up the water in a beaker on top of the hot plate. Everything else was kept exactly the same. The original volume of the can was 370 milliliters. For test number one, the new volume of the can was 350 milliliters. This was 5% crush. Our second trial for the classroom variable led to a volume of 345 milliliters. This increased a little bit, but only showed a result of 6%. We then tested our ice bucket. Unfortunately, every trial was unsuccessful. This is because whenever we would flip the can into the water bucket, ice always got in the way. We attempted this five times before we decided to have ice water would be nearly impossible. All in all, our trial of ice water crush was 0%. Our third trial was warm water. For the first trial of warm water, the volume was 355 milliliters. This was only 4%. Our second trial was 350 milliliters. This was only 5% crush. Overall, this variable was a fail. Our second variable we tested was the temperature of the hot plate. We thought that if we increased the temperature, then the pressure would increase as well, causing the maximum crush of the can. We tried six different variations. In between, the cha in between changing each setting, we let it sit for five minutes so that the procedures would remain the same. We started on the ultimate low and went up from there. Our first variation was our extreme low, which was setting one. During this trial, nothing occurred and there was no crush. Our second variation was setting three on the hot plate. Once again, no crush occurred. On the third variation, we used setting five on the hot plate. During this test, we saw that the can began steaming. The volume of the can was 270 milliliters with a total of 27% crush. The fourth variation was setting seven on the hot plate. During this trial, the can started steaming once again. The amount of volume left over in the can was 350 milliliters with a total of 5.4%. Our fifth variation of our control was setting eight on the hot plate. The result of this was a total of 360 milliliters of water, the total of 2.8 crush, and our sixth variation was our extreme high setting of 10. During this trial, our can began to steam, and the volume left over was a total of 356 milliliters with a total of 1.3%. Due to our lack of time and inadequate findings, we were unable to repeat this procedure and move on to our next variable. Our third variable that we tested was covering the top of the can. We figured that by keeping the particles in a condensed area, eliminating particles from escaping would cause the amount of pressure in the can to increase. We had a total of four variations that we tested. Our first variation was our class control, which was no leg covering the can. Our second variation was covering the top of the can with a piece of paper. Our third variation was covering the can with a piece of scotch tape, and our fourth variation was covering the can with a 400 milliliter beaker. In our controlled variation trials, our results were 360 milliliters of volume and 365 milliliters of volume with a total of 2.8% crush and a total of 1.4% crush. Our second variation was paper, and the results were 335 milliliters and 310 milliliters of volume left over in the can, resulting in a 9% and 16% crush. Our third variation was tape. 
The volume in the cans after this variation was tested were 130 milliliters and 70 milliliters. Since this test was a vast difference, we decided to do a third test and got the results of 85 milliliters of water left in the can. This was a total of 64.8%, 80%, and 76.5%. Our last test was our 400 milliliter beaker. During this test, water vapor formed within the beaker and the can. The results of volume were 220 milliliters and 215 milliliters, causing a total of 41% crush and 42% crush of the can. Yaga -o, yaga -o. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Go! The volume of the can is 230 milliliters. Warm water. Our set. <sighs> Great! Our second job, <laughs> warm water. Step two. Place a clean, dry aluminum can on the hot can. Oh my god. Go. Go. The original procedure is as follows. <laughs> 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 The original is not as well. We live it so high, we can light up with the stars. Yeah, babe, you can rise with the star. I seek for your kind, so don't hide who you are. I'm not the mother guy. I don't you know how to read. Like a dawn is a coaster. Something like a charm in my arms where I hold you. Got it going on, you the bomb, and I told you. We should look great here. It's like the guy from Snoopy. <laughs> but are we supposed to do this? Dude, because I'm a professor spirit. We gotta get out of here, man. I'm in love with your job, reason. And it works. Okay, then let's do it. Overall, this variable was a fail, and so is my group. Peace. <laughs>